Uh, okay, so so I'm just going to do uh, five or ten minutes on materials, and um, then I'll just help you with your projects. Or I, I, I'm taking requests today, so uh, so anything anything you want to know, if you if you got something in your project that you want to know how to do, just uh, just ask me, and I'll either do it here on the on the screen, or I'll come down and give you a hand with it. Okay. So just to uh, take, I'm just going to first of all attach these to the roof from yesterday. Now, <clears throat> if you want to put a material on something, uh, the, the thing to, uh, to remember is um, what type of view do you want the material to display in? Down here we've got uh, visual styles. So a hidden line visual style, we just have a white wall in this situation here. Uh, and if we, if we shade it, it's just gray. And if we make it realistic, it's just gray as well. So there's actually no material on this wall at all. So what I'm going to do is first of all show you how to make a material, but how to make a display differently in each, each of these different uh, situations. For example, you might want to have, if you make this wall into bricks, you might want to have like uh, brick lines running along the wall here uh, in, the, in this hidden line view. But in the, uh, the more detailed, realistic view, you might want to see like uh, a map, a photograph of, of bricks, so it looks more, more realistic. So let's just take this wall and just modify it. So I'm going to select the wall, and I'm going to edit the type, and I'm just going to uh, duplicate it, and we're just going to make it, uh, we'll just make it a brick wall. We? Brick wall. So we made a new, a new wall called brick wall. And in here, I'm going to do this in detail next week. I'm just going to talk about walls next week. But just to start it off, uh, here is where you edit the structure of the wall. Uh, and in here you can add as many layers as you want. Um, so you can insert layers for insulation or uh, thermal layer or whatever. But let's just, let's just keep it simple and we'll just make it a solid brick wall as if, as if, the, uh, as if we just want to make a solid brick wall. Just so we don't get into that complicated uh, stuff. We're just talking about materials here. So here we have structure and the material is set to by category which basically means just grey stuff. We don't know what it is. So we can sele select this and click on this little button here. And that will open up the materials dialog. Yeah, let me just uh, shut that one down. So you'll probably get something like this. It'll probably be around about this size uh, when it opens on your screen and it might have a different uh, uh, it might have a different kind of uh, visual style. You can, you can change the visual style as to how it uh, it displays the different materials. Um, but these are the materials that are in, in the project right now. Uh, so these are the materials that are already loaded in that we can just uh, use if we want to. So we could just apply this gray roofing tile to the roof or this uh, timber siding to, to the building if we wanted to. But uh, let's say we don't want to use this standard brick, this kind of uh, pink, uh, pink brick here. We want to uh, get something else. This button here will open up the Autodesk library of materials. If I press that there, you see this, this other library opens up underneath. And these are, there's kind of three folders here, Autodesk materials, uh, AEC materials, and Dan EDU materials. I can't tell the difference between Autodesk materials and AEC materials. They seem to be pretty much the same. I think there might be some additions and some subtractions, but I don't know why they give you two, two folders and separate them out, because they're basically, you can see down here, they give you the same stuff, ceramics, concrete, fabric, and so on. The Dan EDU stuff is, came with the template I got you to install at the beginning of the course. So that's got various, a small amount of, of materials in here that they give you. But let's say we wanted to find a brick. If I f go first into Autodesk materials, I can go down to uh, Masonry, and they already have certain types of, of bricks set up, and uh, some quite uh, unusual ones as well. So let's say we want to use a gray brick. We just select it, and as you roll the cursor over it, you get this little arrow here. And that says, add material to document. That pushes it up into the project. So now it's in the project and can be used in the project. Okay. <coughs> so now we've got this br gray brick. I can close that down again in the project. So I want to talk about this side here. This is where you can really adjust all the properties of the of the material that you want. The first 
tab is identity, and that's effective. You don't use that too much because most materials come already with a, uh, a name to it, and you don't need to change the name. But what you can do as you get deeper into BIM is you can add the manufacturer, the cost, and all that kind of stuff to, to the element. And then that can be added to the, uh, to the schedules that you make. The next thing is graphics. And graphics is to do with how the material uh, displays in a kind of a hidden line environment. So if you want to have a surface pattern displaying here on the, if we go back to the, oh, I can't do it right now. But if we, uh, if you look at the model, if you remember it was completely white in the hidden line environment, if we wanted to get some lines in there, uh, we can add a surface pattern in here. So I'm just gonna click on pattern. And we get two types of patterns. We get drafting and model. And we want to use model because we're doing it on the outside of the, uh, of the element. <laughs> So then we get these various types of patterns. We have a stretcher bond, which is a Danish size stretcher bond, which is just automatically put in there. But often, if you put that on a, on a, on a surface, it's just too much uh, information. But let's try, it, let's try it first and see what size it is. We can edit it here. So I press edit. And we can actually change uh, the size of it in here and so on. I press OK. So we got stretcher bond assigned. Down here we have a button called Texture Alignment. And what this does is, if I click on that, it shows us the line drawing overlaid on top of the, uh, on top of the, uh, the, re the um, photographic image behind. So that means is we can really get it exact as to whether the lines uh, line up with each other. And we can see here that actually the photographic image is, uh, is a completely different size to the, uh, to the bricks. So we need to, we need to modify that slightly. Um, so let's just press uh, OK. And the last thing we have down here is cut pattern. And that's the pattern you want to see when you take a, a, a cross section through the building. So if we press this and say, OK, it's going to be brick, so we can actually choose. Do they have a brick pattern in this? Something similar to brick. Do, do, do masonry brick. Use this pattern here. So now when we cut through the building, uh, if we leave it on standard settings, it'll it'll display this pattern here. Okay. Under appearance here, we have the image. Now this is where you can actually change the image. You can change this to whatever you want. Uh, if I click on this image here, you can see that we get the uh, the dimensions of the image all set up and ready to go. And uh, if I just open the scale lock. P scale angle. <coughs> now, size X and size Y. Now, this is where this is where Revit screws me up every single semester because they've changed how this pattern actually works. But uh, let's see if we can work it out as we stand up here. <laughs> so. We've got size X at 40 and size Y at 46.76. Uh, now let's see if I modify this, if this will change anything. Yeah, it changes it. Okay, 40. Depending on the pattern type, this, these values up here where it says 1 meter at 16 and 1 meter at 187, Sometimes you get an option down here which, which gives you these exact settings, and that makes it easy to change the size of it. But this pattern here, for some reason, they've got size X and size Y where they seem to have multiplied it to some degree. So uh, we'll leave that for the moment, and I'll try and figure that out later as to, as to how that works. But anyway. Uh, and then we, are, we also have what's called a relief pattern. And that's either called a relief pattern or a bump pattern. Uh, and what that means is when you do a very high quality render of your building, it will, you, don't, you don't want to have to model every single brick to get a shadow from the bricks. But if you use this relief pattern, and it's the same scale as the actual uh, material you put in there, it will put shadows in to make it look as if it's a realistic, uh, a realistic element. Okay? So let's just apply that for the moment. We won't, we won't talk about the physical or the thermal properties yet. We'll leave that to another time. So apply that. Okay. Okay, and you can see that the brick pattern has been put on the surface like this, 
And if I change the type to uh, realistic, also the, this pattern has been put on. Now I need to work out that scaling issue because if I try, I'm just going to try this as an experiment. If I try and change this wall here, edit this, and duplicate it, and we'll call this one timber wall. Go OK. And I change the structure of this one, and I just type in wood. And I'm going to use this clapboard siding. If I go into this image here, you can see that this value, 2108, is actually written down here on scale. So this is something I haven't got a grasp on yet, the new, the new Revit uh, material editor. Some of them are quite easy to modify, where the image at the top here is related directly to the sample size here, and you can just modify it. But other ones seem to have some kind of uh, multiplier in there. And I haven't been able to find a solution as to why that is as yet, but we'll, we'll figure it out. But anyway, let's just leave this as it is. Let's see how many uh, planks we've got in here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we've got 14 planks. So let's say we wanted to make them 200 millimeters deep, and that's, that's the kind of plank we're going to use. So we're going to make the sample size uh, height to be uh, 14 by 200, which will give us uh, 2,800. And you can see that automatically the, the length of it extends. That's because the two elements are, are locked together here. If you switch this off, the length of it wouldn't change. But that's OK for our purposes. So I'm going to say done. I'm going to go back to graphics and the surface pattern. And this time, I'm going to use a horizontal line here. And I'm going to edit this. And we're going to change the line spacing to 200 just so it's the same. Press OK. So now when I go into texture alignment, you can see that we have the opportunity to actually perfectly align. Or is there something wrong with that bump map? Maybe they were 150. Let's try that again. Wood. Okay, one, two, three. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, we'll make the sample size uh, one meter just so we maybe can get a better view of it. No, that doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12, 13. Yeah, 13, 14. That is something I'm going to have to look at. Let's try another type of wood. See if it works. Try wood shakes. Okay, it's just, it seems to be working now. I don't know, it, it has some kind of a Revit uh, brain fail, but let's say OK. And now, if we change it to hidden line, we need to make sure that we set it up. Okay, I think I'm. Uh, 
I think there's something a little bit doolally about this this rabbit. Okay, it's at 150, but I'm not I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, but let's just leave it at that for the moment, and I'll have a look at it later. So anyway, so now we've got two walls. One is brick and one is timber. So you can kind of play with that, uh, so that when you go when you go into your elevation views and so on, you can set it so that the um, the patterns are are visible. It just gives you a lot more quality to the to the drawing. Okay. There's something wrong with this, so I, I'm going to restart Revit and. Um, I'm going to save this, and uh, if you want, yeah. So if you if you want to change color, you go into Edit Type, and here you is where you edit the <coughs> material itself, and it's actually in the material that you change the color. So you can go in and select this image, for example, and you can choose any image, any photograph of anything in here. Uh, not only that, but in, depending on how it works, you can change the tint of it. So if you want to change this to a slightly different color. Uh, we can select tint, and uh, we can change it to more. Let's say we want to make it a little bit, little bit yellow or something like that. It has certain things you can modify. Otherwise, your only opportunity is to go into Photoshop and modify the images directly. Okay. Okay. We just, I just got a question about it, how to print or how to get your stuff out onto uh, onto printing uh, printing worthy uh, paper. So what we did the other day is we set up some um, some sheets here, and this is basically how you do it. So let's just uh, take an elevation in here, and uh, let's just modify it a little bit so it looks. Um, actually, let's delete that one. Let's take the other side. So we show some of the patterns. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the elevation, right click and activate it, and then we I want to crop it down so we don't see the uh, so we don't see the uh, the box, and so it's big enough for the sheet. So I'm going to put it over here, and you can see that the level lines they actually follow along. You don't have to go and uh, take them afterwards yourself. So let's say that's okay. Then we can switch off the visibility of it and right click again and say deactivate view save project the <coughs> title for the drawing is all the way over here off the sheet so we can s select that by clicking it once and then dragging it over and placing it wherever you want to put it so that uh, the name of the drawing you have over here is also displayed on the sheet and actually maybe what we'll do is if I activate the view again I can come down here and change it to uh, shaded view and I'm going to switch the shadows on just so it looks a little bit uh, a little bit like a concept drawing and deactivate it okay so let's say this is my masterpiece and I want to uh, print it uh, because, because of the system in the school here you need to uh, save it as a document first and then upload it to the to the system so um, you need to save it as a PDF so you go up to the Revit symbol up here, click on it, and we actually use the print option here to uh, print to a PDF. So I press print, and up here we should have an option to print to Adobe PDF. Okay. <coughs> so then we just need to set it up <coughs> so it's the correct scale and so on. So down here is a, a setup button so I'm gonna press setup and you can see that it's kind of all uh, set up incorrectly so we made an A3 sheet so we need to make sure that the paper size we're printing to is also A3 so I'm changing that to A3 uh, it's landscape mode that's fine uh, it's centered that's also fine and where it says here fit to page it's very important you don't have it fitting to the page because that means it'll expand we want to have it printed to the exact scale that we've, we've drawn it to. So we press zoom and we make sure it's set to 100%. So it's always set to 100%. Um, and that seems like it's pretty well set up. So I press OK. <coughs> and down here, when we go back to the main print menu, you have an option to set it to either current window, visible portion, or selected views and sheets. And this is really useful because if I select this, I can just select all my sheets 
in one go that are ready to go. I can actually switch off the view, so it's just the sheets I want to print. I don't need to print the splash screen. That's just the little box you see when you first open up uh, oh, Revit. Uh, and press OK. And it's asking me, do you want to save these settings for use in a future uh, Revit session? And I'm just going to say yes, because I'm going to print out different uh, versions of it. So I'm just going to say set one. <coughs> and then up here, we have the option to create separate files, so separate PDFs, or we can combine all the PDFs together into one document, which is the easiest way to do it. So if I press combine multiple selected views into a single file and press OK, uh, we get a message uh, because uh, Revit is changing its printing style from uh, vector printing, which is about drawing lines, to raster printing because we have some shadows and stuff in there. Don't worry about that. It doesn't make any difference. Close. It's asking me where I'm going to save it. Sample intro project on the on the desktop. Save. And it's going and printing all the sheets that I've selected now into one single document. So there it is there. So there's a PDF document, which has got all the sheets set up in it that I've set up. You can see it goes through, <coughs> through them all. <coughs> so that's, that's ready to either email or to print to the Kia uh, print server here. So there it is there on my desktop. Yeah. When we're printing this out, the printer gave a frame for it. Is it change the scale or not? It shouldn't change the scale. That's the first I've heard about this. But this is a new system. It's only this semester the system has come in. So, so we still have to see how it works. Um, so let's. I'm going to try. Let's let's try that as an uh, as an example. Anyway, so I'm going to go into the Kia print server. So I'm going to go into uh, paper cut. <coughs> Got my login address, gonna change that to English, login. And I'm gonna go down to web print, submit a job, uh, and I'm just gonna choose anything in color in PCG, Princess Shalakil, so it doesn't print down the road. So I go to print options, copies one, upload documents, and we just upload it from the desktop there. And then we go upload and complete. <coughs> so now it's been uploaded to the uh, to the system. It says held in queue. So uh, you need to click on it, and when you're ready to print it, you just press uh, print over here. And they make you select it again. Maybe what I need to do there is actually do that do that again. Let's do paper cut. Log in. Web print. Held in queue. If I select this, it's it's making it print to a different okay, this is new. So we're in the A building and we're on the third floor, so let's just print to there. The second floor. Is this the second floor? Let's, yeah. say, let's just say release all, because what it has been doing is that it's just been releasing, and then you could just go to any printer in the building and take it out. But now it seems to be asking a specific printer, so you don't have to. You don't have I've to. Been printed, you just upload it there, and you just log in. And it just yeah. yeah. So it does work that way. Okay. So I don't know why they give you that option. Anyway, so that's my confused way of how to print uh, in Kia here. Shine. Yeah. When you select again. If you don't have this Adobe PDF option, if you go into print here. Uh, and you don't get this option at the top here, uh, you need to download a, a PDF writer. So uh, if I go into uh, the internet, <coughs> I'm just going to type in, there's one, uh, one I use called uh, Primo PDF. This is just a free little uh, software that you can, um, you can download and it installs on your system. So it allows you to make PDFs from any program that you can print from, basically. So you just press down, download free and uh, install it. Primo PDF is one. Another one is called uh, Cute PDF, but there's there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them out there. Uh, and this is actually the one I'm using at the moment, Cute PDF Writer. So you can download that as well. But uh, so as soon as you download that, you'll get an option in your print menu. 
to print to Qt PDF or print to Primo PDF or one of these things. Also, the Word document can print in PDF. Yeah, also, but I mean, the new versions of Word just allows you to save in PDF anyway, so it, you don't have to print them anymore. Okay. I'm just going to go 